and looking at the time, I think we're pretty much good to kick this off. So welcome to everyone that's already in the call. We got a lot of people signed up for today's call, and I know we got a lot of new people here, so it puts a lot of uh, pressure on me, but I love the pressure. It really uh, pushes me to perform, make sure I give you the highest quality of training possible. And today, as you've probably seen in the emails, we're going to be covering the role of the elbow when serving. And this is extremely important since if you get this right, if you master the role of the elbow, it's going to allow you to get into a better racket drop and it's going to allow you to generate a lot more effortless power on the serve. It's very important and it is something, unfortunately, a lot of players get wrong, especially myself. When I was working on my serve, I had problems with this. So I have firsthand experience on how to fix it. So today, what we're going to do, we'll spend the first segment of the call looking at video analysis. And then the second segment, I'm going to transition to the second camera. And we're going to do a short train along where I take you through four progressions. And they're just going to be shadow swings, working on building it up slowly, working on the roll of the elbow. So with that, let's get started right here with the video analysis. And I'm just going to briefly go through the roll of the elbow. I don't want to go into too much detail since I don't want to bore you guys. But let's just start with the first component. And what you'll see is on screen, you can see me right here. And I'm going to pause it at this frame right here. This is a very important position. And if you're new to OTI, you're going to hear us talk about this position a lot in the courses. And this is what we call the half serve position. Now, in terms of the elbow, what can you see? The first thing you can see is see how my elbow creates a straight line with my shoulders. See how it's lined up right there. So there's the elbow, there's the shoulders. Now, this is very important, getting that alignment. This is something a lot of players get wrong. And this is one of the big problems I had. And players, instead, they have the elbow somewhere here. And see how then that would break the shoulder and elbow alignment if the elbow is too far forward. So that's the first thing you're going to see. And you're going to see this amongst all the best players in the game. They're going to get into a position where they've turned the upper body away and they have this straight line between the shoulders and the elbow, just like so. That's the first thing you're going to see. Now, the second component with the elbow, which is very, very important, is the positioning of the elbow in relationship to your body and your shoulder. What you're going to see is my elbow is approximately just below my shoulder. Now, if you were to look from the side angle, you'll see, though, that my elbow is not tucked in too close to the body, but also it's not gone too high above shoulder level. If it goes anywhere to these extremes, let me do these lines right here. So there's the shoulder beneath there, just like so. If it goes anywhere above this green line and anywhere below where it tucks in too close to the body, that's when problems really start to occur. So the general guideline is you want the elbow to be approximately just below shoulder level. That's a general guideline. Now, this is where the important part comes in. And this is what we call the timing of the movement forward of the elbow. And what you'll see right here, if I draw in this line, what I want you to pay attention to is as I complete the right component of the right to left. Now, pay it, be, keep this in mind. When we talk about the right to left, if I split the screen up right here, this is the right side here. This is the left side. So there's two components. This is the right component of the right to left. And this right here is the left component. So just keep that in mind when I'm talking about this. And what you're going to see is the elbow is going to remain approximately in this position as I complete the right component of the right to left. Watch this very closely. What you're going to see is I'm going to bend from the elbow, but see how it remains in that position as I've completed the right component. And now in this position, see how my racket is approximately above the head, just like so, and the elbow is still in that position. Now, a lot of players, and I know, I know a lot of players in this call are going to have the problem where your elbow moves forward too quickly. And that's a big problem since it hinders your ability to get into the optimized racket drop. So this is very, very important. Look at that one more time. So from here, the elbow is in the appropriate position. Now from here, it remains there as I complete the right component of the right to left. So with that in mind, let's test you guys. Let's see what you guys know already. If my elbow is remaining in that position, what is moving the racket and the hand? 
to complete the right component. What do I have to do with my arm to get that racket moving? Let me see in the chat. Let's see some comments. We've uh, spoke about it a lot in the course, as you should know. Rotate shoulder. All of these are different components, but what's the main one? I think Jasper just said it, bend at the elbow. Christine, bend at the elbow. Christine, that's not fair. You've been with OTI a long time, so you'll know. But it's, she's exactly right. You'll bend at the elbow. And what you'll see is, at this position, see how my arm is a little bit greater than 90 degrees. Now, this varies from player to player. You do want to avoid the arm being too straight. Someone like Federer does do this, but he corrects himself by bending from the elbow and bringing the hand back around in this direction. But what we recommend is a general guideline somewhere around this position, just greater than 90 degrees, a slight bend in the arm. But what I want you to pay attention to is as I'm bending from the elbow, you're going to see how this angle decreases. My hand moves between my ear and my elbow, and it moves over the bicep. Watch this movement. See how the angle is decreasing? And now if I pause at this frame, you can see how I've closed that angle in my arm. So now my hand is positioned over the bicep, just like so. That's also a very important component I wanted to show to you. So now with that in mind, we've covered number one, the alignment. So you want to have a straight line between the shoulders and the elbow. Second component, you want to keep the elbow fixed in one position approximately as you complete the right component of the right to left. So now the next question is what happens after you've done these two things? What will happen from here is as the racket begins to move over your head, see what's happening with the elbow already? What you'll see is the elbow will now begin to move forward and upward, and that will propel the racket down and away from the body. Watch this movement. See how the racket goes down and away. And see how the elbow, watch the elbow again. Watch how the elbow leads to contact. As the elbow leads, it's almost like the hand is dropping down as the elbow is coming up. The elbow leads. And then you get into this position here where you have this angle with the arm. The elbow is leading, as you can see. Hand comes back somewhere approximately to where it is roughly level with the elbow. This does vary with the professional players. Some pro players can get the hand further down, but I don't have that mobility and flexibility in the shoulder. I could if I worked on it, but I don't uh, play anymore. But that's a key position right there. That's what we call the racket drop. And that is the key position we're striving to get into. And that's why the role of the elbow is so important. Since this is a major power position on the serve, since you pre-stretch the shoulder muscles, you pre-stretch the forearm muscles, and this stores what we call kinetic energy in the muscles, which is then released into the ball, and it gives you a lot more effortless power. So that's why the whole objective is when we're talking about the role of the elbow on the right to left, it's all because we want to get into this position, just like so. Now, let me just show you this real quick. See already, see the difference in the alignment? Can you see that already? See how I broke that alignment? There's this line of the shoulders. There's my elbow. It's too far forward. And what ends up happening is as the elbow now, as the racket moves over my head, since the elbow is too far forward, it opens up my racket face, just like so. And now that hinders my ability to get into the optimized racket drop. You can see the angle between my arm. See that right there? And then as I swing the contact, racket face completely open. It's a very messed up serve. So as you can see, this is actually great for all of you guys to see. Uh, in real footage, since I know a lot of you guys will look at Greg, for example, or myself or Florian hitting the, <clears throat> hitting the serve, and you may think, oh, God, I'm never going to get a serve like that. But this just gives you a real clear uh, picture in mind that, you know, I started in the same boat a lot of you guys are starting in. I didn't have a great serve, as you can clearly see. And it took me a lot of hard work to get to the position I'm in now where I can hit the serve. So that wraps it up for part one of the role of the elbow deep dive. Now in part two, I'll go into a train along session where I'll take you through a series of progressions, around three to four progressions that will allow you to work on this all important topic within the comfort of your own home. So to watch that, all you have to do is become an all access pass member and you'll get full access to the deep dive. 
But also the great part about this is we hold these deep dives every month. So this is just a sample from one of the ones that we've held for our All Access Pass members. And these deep dives go into all different topics of tennis. So for example, we recently held one on the slice backhand. And for that, we held two calls. The first call was a slow motion analysis where we went into some of the key fundamentals required uh, to transform in a slice backhand. And then in the second call, we do a train along session where we work on those uh, concepts that we looked at in the first call. So it really guides you through step by step on what you need to do to transform any area of your game. So for more details on that, if you want to become an All Access Pass member and get full access to these deep dives, all you have to do is scroll beneath the video to find all the details.